Apple spiking today after CEO Tim Cook says Apple will be safe if the U.S.-China trade war escalates, even if it does. But just as it gets potential relief on that front, its legal troubles uh, back home could be getting started. I don't want this to happen, Josh, if there's anything you can do. I like all my Apple stuff. Leave this company alone. It's the greatest company in the world. Josh Lipton is in San Francisco with more. <laughs> Joe, two app developers have now filed a suit in California against the iPhone maker, claiming they are compelled to sell their iOS apps via the App Store because Apple has monopoly power, in their words, over app distribution, that Apple has charged developers an overly expensive commission of 30% for nearly 11 years. Suit also claims Apple stifles innovation. Apple, for its part, saying it doesn't comment on lawsuits. This is another legal challenge for the App Store. Remember, just last month, the U.S. Supreme Court handed Apple a setback, allowing antitrust suits against the App Store to proceed. Plaintiffs in that case also argue that Apple monopolizes the market. But CEO Tim Cook has come out swinging, flatly rejecting that argument. I think that with, uh, but with size, I think scrutiny is fair. I think we should be scrutinized. I don't think anybody reasonable is going to come to the conclusion that Apple's a monopoly. Our share is uh, much more modest. Uh, we're, we don't have a dominant position in any market. So you're saying you're not a monopoly? We are not a monopoly. The new suit comes today as Apple is among those tech titans now reportedly facing potential U.S. antitrust probes. Now, we don't know what the government's possible concern could focus on here, but Dan Ives of Wedbush thinks the App Store would be front and center in any such possible inquiry, that the DOJ would be looking at whether its subscription fees from developers and the use of that store are in any way anti-competitive. Investors would certainly take notice if that happened. The App Store is estimated to represent 35 percent of that broader services segment. Joe, back to you. All right. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, let's trade it. Pete. All what, right. What well, Katie Hubert is my favorite analyst, and she actually broke this down already this morning. She talked about a couple of different things, the trade war being one of them, how much that could impact the stock itself. And the other one was this entire topic. And she thinks it's about $13 to the stock. Right now, she's at 231 She remains at 231 But she actually sees the concerns here. So are they really hampering innovation? I wouldn't think so. But I think Tim Cook makes a very good point. I don't know that you can call them a monopoly either, Joe. I mean, I think that they have a decent share, but they absolutely don't have a dominant share to the point where they're not competition, because there absolutely is. There is Apple, there is Samsung, there's all the different phones here in the U.S., and obviously when you go overseas, they are not as dominant as people would think. You, you, we would like them to be as shareholders, but they aren't. You're going to have to rewrite um, these laws for antitrust to somehow take into account a whole different model for, for these tech yes. companies, because uh, consumers are not being harmed. I pay zero for almost everything that I, that I do on Apple. And, and right. as far as, re okay, almost zero, almost. right? And by the way, I'm, I'm with set, you so far. If we're, I agree. Suddenly, if we're <laughs> suddenly going to go the euro model where we start thinking about competitors, and oh my gosh, right. competitors, there might be layoffs because they're not as good as Apple. That's not Apple's problem, right. all right? And, and all of a sudden, what, what does Facebook, Amazon, Apple, they all have something similar that causes them to be the, uh, suddenly in the, in the crosshairs? Why? Because they're big they're and good at what they do. They're good. Because yep. they're big and good at what they You're supposed to want to try to get a monopoly, a legal monopoly. Everybody wants to use you. So I'm going to see what this lawyer says. But it, uh, It's a fine line between where, you know, a, a dominant product is a dominant product because it's so far ahead of the competition. Right. One of the big issues for Apple is also not only uh, alternatives to the, to the App Store uh, and a China trade war, but also just that there's a lower priced phone that's almost as good Good as, as the iPhone. So far, it's been at a place where there's been nothing uh, that's been really rivaling them at this price point. So does, is, is, does that give them uh, a antitrust dynamic? I, I agree with you, Joe, but the argument is that competitors can't get in there and have a fair spot on the App Store without Apple dictating the terms. It, it reminded me, I mentioned it this morning, it reminded me a little of net neutrality, where AT&T or Comcast, they, they build out, they spend billions of dollars building out all of this pipe. And then they're not allowed to charge people for, for what they built out, like it's some utility or something. There are costs to things like this. The, the market can dictate what you said. Who did you say no one's right of me? Did you say you said oh. that earlier? Is this one of those instances? <laughs> I said where, I'm sitting to your like, left. Yeah, I know. Anyone. You're sitting my life <laughs> like everyone. But I don't understand <laughs> it. So let, let's, uh, you're As sitting anyone could be. <laughs> The regulatory scrutiny piling up uh, for big tech. Our next guest says there's one name that's most at risk, and Gary Reback was the antitrust attorney in Silicon Valley uh, that led the push 
uh, in the government's case, case against Microsoft in the 90s. He joins us now. And, and Gary, we are talking about you on, on Squawk Box or the Microsoft case that, that actually it probably did eventually effectuate some, some good things for technology. I thought it set back Microsoft like 10, 15 years. The stock did nothing and needed a new CEO and needed Bomber to sort of just build a moat for years and years. But, but there was something positive, I guess, about the action it was taken, in your view. Oh, I think it was extremely consequential. I mean, if you go back, say, 14 or 15 years before the smartphone, the only, and Microsoft had like 97 or 98 percent of the browser market, the only way you could get to Google was type www.google.com in the Microsoft browser. But of course, if you did that, there was no reason, no technical reason why Microsoft had to take you there. They could have just put up a big warning screen that said, don't go to this site. It steals your personal information without your permission. And had they done that, I think they would have killed Google in the cradle. Why didn't they do that? I've always thought that it was because of the risk of additional antitrust enforcement. They were already underwater. And about a year ago, the New York Times went out and interviewed some Microsoft people. And they said, yeah, that's right, that we didn't take those steps because of the fear of antitrust enforcement. Okay. So and, and that, that opened the market. Hang on. That opened okay. the market for Google right. and Facebook and Amazon in a way that they would have never flourished. And you think now Google is in a similar position. I'll tell you what I keep coming back to, Gary, and that is the golden egg and, and the goose. And I look at, at Europe and I try to think of, of a great innovative company that has changed the world in the last 10, 15, 20 years. And over here, I can come up with like 10 of them over there. What do they got? SAP, what have they come up with? I, why do we want to, it's a fine line to walk between making sure that there's, you know, that, that no one is, is unfairly uh, hampering competitors, but you don't want to, you don't want to ruin great American companies that have innovated and given us all this great stuff where consumers haven't really been harmed. So you certainly don't want to uh, uh, imperil innovation, but I think your framework is a little misplaced here. All of my clients, have always been American companies, uh, with perhaps one or two very minor exceptions. They're American companies. They deserve the right to compete in the American marketplace. If you go back and look at what Google did, you'll recall that the FTC inadvertently released a huge portion of their staff report a couple of years ago to the Wall Street Journal. And the Wall Street Journal published it. And it's still on the Wall Street Journal site. And it says what Google was doing. And it's bad stuff. I mean, they were putting their own properties ahead of competitors, even when their own algorithm said that competitors should be first. They were making lists of competitors to demote in the search results, even when their own algorithm wouldn't support that. It was bad stuff. It wasn't yeah. fair competition. And they said they'd never they, do that, too. They'd never do any evil. So that's even worse, because they were never supposed to. Uh, I, I understand that. I wish we're going to have to have you back. Or maybe I've come up. Oh, I'm not allowed to do that. Melissa got mad when I said come on Squawk Box. Uh, I can't invite you on. We'll on have you back on Fast, Gary. Yeah, we'll have you back on Fast. It's great to have you. Because I want to talk about it more. And, uh, and, and you've got some. So, uh, you know, some insight here. I, I'm ready to just, you know, I love these companies so much. I'm ready to say have at it. But uh, anyway, you, you make some very good points. I appreciate that. Uh, but we'll have you back. Uh, anyway, uh, let's trade it. Who wants well, to talk about it? So, so Gary, one of his notes and the point that he's getting at with Google is that he thinks they are the most at risk. So let's just go right oh, into the market. Company, and, and Google right now is trading like the most at risk, whether you think so or not. Um, what are the remedies? Uh, you know, there are those that think there are a number of properties at Google you could begin to, to, to spin out, including YouTube, which is, is, is very undervalued and would be accretive, I think, to the valuation. I'm sorry? Yeah, no, I just... That's well, why is that? I not, why can't Google have YouTube? I don't understand that. Why? It's not that they can't have it. I, I think as a shareholder, I bet if you ask shareholders what they would want, they, they might be in favor oh, of that. Oh, well, that's fine if, if you enhance shareholder value, but just in terms... I don't see how that gives them some kind of competitive... What's wrong? <laughs> huh? You got anything? No, my head... You got is. anything. What do you got? So down. You got? I looked like he was fading. I know. I, know. I was just thinking about... I was just I know thinking what about a lot thinking. of things. You know, I got a lot of my mind. Thursday cannot come fast enough.